All right, thanks for watching. And today I want to cover a pretty cute result in probability theory called Bayes' theorem. Because it's all about the Bayes, all the Bayes, no trouble. Anyway, so <laughs> it has to do with conditional probability. And recall, if you've seen this, the probability of A given B so suppose you know B and you want to figure out what the probability of A, the probability of A intersect B divided by the probability of B. In other words, suppose B is your new universe, so here you divide by B and you want to figure out which part of A is in B. So A intersect B. And the goal of Bayes' theorem is to figure out, or in other words, find, P of B given A in terms of, of P of A given B. So suppose you know the probability of A given B, how can you find the opposite scenario? And I'll give you an example uh, where this happens. Oh. And for this, it's just a bit of cute math. Probability of B given A by the same definition when you switch B and A, that's probability of B intersect A divided by the probability of A. Again, you're always dividing by the probability of the thing you're given it. You know, like B given A means you divide by probability of A. And that's probability of A intersect B over probability of A. And now, remember, you want to write this whole she shebang in terms of probability of A given B. But this identity tells you, in fact, that probability of A intersect B is probability of A given B times probability of B. So the numerator becomes probability of A given B times probability of B. And let's see what the denominator becomes. And for this, notice you can divide up the set A into two things. And suppose this is if you want the set B. On the one hand, A is the same as A intersect B everything in A that is in B, and everything in A that is not in B. So that is if you want A minus B or A intersect B complement. So in particular, it is true that the probability of A is the same thing as probability of A intersect B plus probability of A intersect B complement. A intersect B plus probability of A intersect B complement. But now, by a similar result here, just repeating this, we get probability of A intersect B times probability of B. And the first term becomes the same thing. A, intersect, A given B times probability of B. And well, for the second term, do the same thing, but instead of B, you have B complement. So P A intersect B complement is P of A given B complement times P of B complement. And you have the following formula. A given B complement, P of B complement. Which gives you, in the end, what is called Bayes' theorem. Let me state this now. So Bayes, very important in statistics, actually. Yeah. There's something called Bayesian statistics, and it follows, at least from this guy. Suppose you want to find the probability of B given A. Then it's very nice. You just do the following. You just switch B and A, so P of A given B, and you repeat this, P of B. And all you 
you do, you repeat the numerator, p of a given b, p of b, and you do the same thing but with b complement. So p of a given b complement, p of b complement. And that's a nice way of sort of reversing, you know, uh, a and b. So in other words, p of b given a is basically given in terms of p of a given b. And now let me do an example that's kind of paradoxical, you see. So suppose there's a disease that haunts the world and it's called pyomitis. And this disease affects one person in 100,000. So suppose one person in 100,000 people has pyomitis. And this is a very good disease, actually. It's a disease that makes you super excited about math and probability. So suppose one person in 100,000 has pyomitis. But fortunately, there's a very quick test to figure out if you have pyomitis or not. So suppose there's a test that is, so that's a, so it's correct 99% of the time, of the time, if you have the disease. If you have the, the, the pyomitis disease, and that's correct 99.5% of the time, if you don't. So, 99% of the time, if you have the disease, it tells you you have the disease. If not, then 1% over the time, I think that's called a, a, a false positive. No, false negative. It means you have the disease, but it tells you you don't have the disease. And 99.5% of the time, if you don't have the disease, it tells you you don't have the disease, but 0.5% of the time, that's the thing you should be worried, is that it you don't have the disease, but it tells you you have it. Both things are problematic. Okay, another question is, suppose a person tests positive, what is the probability that it, that person actually has the disease? So what is the probability that a person who tests positive has the disease? question is, how can we answer this? But look, this tells you, you know, this first part tells you if you have the disease, then it tells you um, that it tests positive. So the point is we know the probability of testing positive given that you have the disease, which is 99%. But we want to reverse this. So we want the probability of having the disease if you're testing positive. And for this, since we have to switch it, have to do a switcheroo, we have to use this Bayes theorem. So, and you'll see it. So it's all this quite surprising. So by Bayes, we have the probability of disease given that you're positive. That, given that it tests positive, you switch this around again, P of positive given you have the disease times P of disease. So we repeat this. And now you repeat the whole thing, P of positive given disease times P of disease. And then you do the same thing, except you replace this by its complement, which is P of positive given not disease and the probability that you don't have the disease. Okay, 
And now let's just use our data to do this. So, given that you have the disease, 99% of the time, it, you know, uh, it tells you it's pos the test is positive. Now, the probability of having the disease is 1 in 100,000. And you just repeat this, so 99%. 99 thick loaf balloons, okay, uh, over times 1 over 100,000. All right, and now, if you don't have the disease, then the test is correct 99.5% of the time. So 99.5% of the time, it tells you you don't have the disease, which means that 0.5% of the time, Let's see, it tells you you have the disease, so it tests positive. And well, not having the disease, that's 99,999 over 100,000. And so you have this expression, and here is a surprising fact. If you plug this in, you get 2%. Isn't that interesting? It's a pretty crappy test. It tells you if you test positive, there's actually just a 2% chance of having the disease. Weird, huh? It is pretty paradoxical, but um, the reason is basically, um, let's see, actually this, you know, there are a lot of people who don't have the disease. So saying that the test is wrong 0.5% of the time, this is actually a pretty big number. So in fact, basically it says that there are a lot of people for whom you know, the test doesn't work. So don't be fooled. Just because I tell you 0.5%, if you have lots of people that are affected by it, it's actually huge. If it were a really good test, this would be like 0.005% or something. So, that said, how about one more example? Suppose that someone tests negative, what is the probability of not having the disease? So, probability that someone who tests negative doesn't have the disease. Disease. And it's very similar, so... So, we want the probability of not having the disease given that it's neg negative, but you know the opposite, which is 99.5%. So probability of having negative, given that you don't have the disease, times the probability of not having the disease, over, you repeat this, probability of negative, given not disease, probability of not disease. And you repeat this, but you replace this by the complement, which is probability of negative given you have the disease times the probability of the having a disease. Okay, now, if you don't have the disease, the test is correct 99% of the time. So 99% of the time, it will tell you it's negative. So 99.5% times the huge probability of not having the disease so 99,999 over 100,000. I don't know what this makes me think of. Uh, 525,600 minutes, it's not the same number, but I guess it's a huge number, that's why. And then you repeat this 99.5% times 999999, okay, 100,000. Now, 
the probability of testing negative if you have the disease. And remember, 99% of the time, if you have the disease, it'll tell you it's positive. So if it's negative, that's just 1% of the time. Times and probability of the disease, 1 over 100,000. And if you calculate this, the interesting thing is it is pretty accurate. It's actually 99.999999%. Not, not necessarily dot, 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 but like pretty close to it. So I would say if you, um, if the test tells you it's negative, it's pretty likely you don't have the disease. So basically, so if you test negative, don't worry, but if you test positive, you know, it's better to do an a more accurate test because if you test positive, it's not very accurate. All right, so I hope you like this little paradoxical base theorem excursion. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.